I think Noddy Holder put it best when he said, It's Christmas! So in the spirit of Christmas, and with the FIFA World Cup still ever so slightly in the rearview mirror now, we're going to give you a present that combines both festivities. I love a good World Cup format video, I hope you do. And all. You're going to have to, regardless, because over the next week we've got seven of them for you that'll go nicely with your mulled wine, your turkey, and allow you to easily ignore some of the worst relatives that are stopping by. We've got the World Cup enlarged. As a 32-team tournament from 1982 to 1994, or with the most recent addition, being expanded to 48 teams. We've got the World Cup shrunk down too, as we keep the 24-team tournament from 1998. We've also gone and changed the format for the 1954 and 1982 tournaments, giving all the teams a fair chance in 54 by allowing them to play three group games instead of two, as well as going in straight to the knockout phase from the groups in 1982. We don't need to touch the first group phase, for there are 16 places to play for in the second phase as opposed to 12. We have to discern the two unfortunate third place teams, however, who would cruelly miss out on the knockout phase. Czechoslovakia paid for their draws to Kuwait and France and a failure to win in Group D, their two points ranking last in the third place table. Meanwhile, one of just a smattering of undefeated teams didn't even prosper in the third place rankings as Cameroon's three draws from three was coupled by their inability to either find the net or concede with the kind of regularity that edged Scotland and Yugoslavia into the knockouts. Far and away a beneficiary of the expansion from 16 to 24 teams were Hungary, who were whipping El Salvador 10-1, a World Cup record in the groups, enough goal difference to send them through in second place behind only Algeria in the third place standings. Let's look at this quarter by quarter then. In the Camp Nou and the Bernabeu we had an all-European affair with plenty of Eastern and Central European delights when Poland met Yugoslavia in Catalonia and the Soviet Union were treated to Austria in the capital. Gregor Zlato rolled back the years with a brace in Barcelona to take the opening last 16 tie 2-0 against the Yugoslavians whilst the Soviet Union were rampant against Austria. Oleg Blokin and Yuri Gavrilov helping themselves to two apiece in a 4-1 rampage. It demanded a high-stakes meeting of two of the dark horses in the 1982 World Cup and nothing could separate the sides in a dour, nil-nil draw. Therefore, the first ever penalty shootout in the World Cup would hand victory to the Soviets. They prepared to meet another European name which was all but confirmed by the very first last 16 tussle from the next quarter of the draw. Erwin Vandenberg's sole goal was enough to eliminate the final African representative in a poor 1-0 win for Belgium against Algeria. After thrashing Northern Ireland at the same stage, the inevitable look in France led by Michel Platini had ran riot in Seville over Belgium, scoring three times to confirm a semi-final against the Soviets. France would need penalties to secure victory in the Bernabeu but nonetheless penciled themselves in for their first ever World Cup final later that week. They were due to meet two teams who were approaching the final week of the tournament in very different spirits. Brazil had simply continued their rich vein of form from the group phase when the likes of Zico, Falcao and Socrates converged on a 4-2 splattering of the hosts in Valencia. Concurrently, West Germany were making easy work of the Hungarians, Horst Rubrecht prolific in a 3-0 victory. In the final quarter of the draw, a Battle of Britain beached at Alicante as Scotland tiptoed into their first knockout stage contest. Suddenly, however, they took flight through an early goal against England through Kenny Dalglish. England quickly bounced back, Paul Mariner netting before the break, which was swiftly followed by a Trevor Francis brace that put Scottish dreams to bed. Waiting for England in the quarter-finals were an Italian outfit who were limping into the last eight. Out of four fixtures, Italy had drawn three group stage matches and snatched a late last 16 win over the reigning champions Argentina. In some quarters, England were made favourites. By even the half-time point, the likes of Marco Tardelli and Paolo Rossi had rendered that viewpoint foolish. They netted two in the first half before Rossi netted only his second goal of the tournament in the second half in a 3-0 thrashing. 
In the semi-final, we were treated to the game of the tournament as Paolo Rossi vanquished bad memories of the Totonero scandal and the long-term suspension that followed. The Italian forward scored all three of the Azuri's goals in a 3-2 win over the neutral's favourite Brazil. The final was even more comprehensive, Rossi, Tardelli and Alessandro Altabelli scoring in a 3-1 victory over France in the final for Italy's third World Cup triumph.